time for our next MP complete problem, which will be vertex cover. A vertex cover is a, is a subset of the vertices of a graph, exactly what we had before. But here, we're, a vertex cover requires that every single edge in the graph, at least one of its vertices must be in our vertex cover. This is different than our previous problems because we want this set to be small to make it like optimal in a sense because we a vertex cover, a, value, a valid one would be every single vertex of this graph. Of course you have every single edge covered by doing that. Let's look at some easier ones. Let's look at V1, V3, V5, V6, V7, and V8. So I need to check every single edge. That's touching the blue, 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 blue. Every single edge is touching a blue vertex, therefore this is a vertex cover. I need that every single edge touches at least one blue vertex. It can touch multiple. Notice that this edge touches multiple and this edge touches multiple. Can we find a smaller one? Well, let's try and remove some of these and see what we can do. What if I looked at V2, V4, V5? V2, V4, V5. So let's check all of our edges. That touches a blue node, a blue node, a blue node, a blue node, blue, 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 blue. Yep, it's a vertex cover. Let's check out something that's not. So we have V2, V3, V8, V2, V3, V8. That touches one, oops, no, that doesn't work. So V1, V5, uh, breaks it, let's say. We have V1 and V5, both are not in V prime. So that is not a vertex cover. So it's our vertex cover. Let's see what we can do with our proof. We have to state the problem first. The problem is, given a graph G and an integer M does have a vertex cover of size M, exactly the ones we just saw before. To prove that it is a MP problem, we just need to verify it. So give me a solution. A solution needs to have the correct number of elements. And for every single edge, I need to check whether or not one of its vertices is in the graph. There are big old M edges and there are big old N edges vertices in V prime. So if I just loop over both the number the edges and the vertices, it's big old MN, clearly a polynomial in N and M. So it's NP. This is typically very easy, like I said. Now we need to show we can do a reduction. Our reduction we're going to do here is going to be reducing the independent set problem to the vertex cover problem. Let's check why this is the case. Let's suppose we have an independent set. If I have an independent set like V1, V3, v6, v7, v8. Let's look at the other vertices that we have not highlighted. v2, v5, v4. First, let's check that this is an independent set. This does not touch any blue vertices. 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 So the blue nodes are an independent set. And now if we look at the red nodes, this edges covered this edge that edge that edge that edge that edge huh that's exactly the vertex cover we looked at earlier so it looks like if you have an independent set if you find the complement of it everything that isn't in that set then that will be a vertex cover so these look like they're opposites and just like we saw before we could prove this is an if and only if i proved one way i will leave it to you to prove the other way so i'm going to say if we have an independent set then V minus that independent set is a vertex cover. Let's prove it. So, like we saw before, we're going to start with an independent set and then just use our definitions. So, our independent set, V prime. We're going to define what V minus V prime is just so we can talk about it. I'm going to call it W. If UV is an edge, then by definition, at least one of those can't be an independent set because if it was, let's go up here, let's say UV is an edge, like this one, if both of these vertices were in it, it wouldn't be an independent set because then they would be touching by an edge. So for every single edge, at least one of the vertices is not in 
the independent set. So, if this is an edge, then at least one of U or V are not in V prime. So, if one of them is not in V prime, we have that U must be in W or V must be in W because it is the complement. If it's not in V prime, by definition, it must be in W. So, one of them is in there. I don't care which. But because one of them is in there, that's all I need to show that it is a vertex cover. I gave an edge, and then I said at least one of the things is in the vertex cover. We did it. Good job. So, for any edge, UV in the set of edges, one of them must be in W. Done. You can work the other way of the proof. I recommend you do it as practice for when you're going to need to do these proofs on your own. Now, having done this, let's do our final proof that the independent set problem can be reduced to the vertex cover problem. It'll be relatively straightforward, just like our last proof, because we did that lemma already. So, given a graph and an integer, that is what an instance of the independent set problem is, we must do some transformation to turn it into a instance of the vertex cover problem. To do this, we're going to say that if we have an independent set of size k, then we have a vertex cover of size n minus k. Through this exact methodology, we could say exactly what the solution is. We don't care though, actually. All we care is that if we have an independent set, then we have a vertex cover of the correct size. So if I have an independent set of size k, I have a vertex cover of size n minus k. I can directly map this. I can map k to n minus k. Notice g stays the same. So if I have an independent set, if and only if I have a vertex cover, then these problems are the same. The yeses map to yeses. And I can reduce this thing in n plus m time by just copying the graph and then doing arithmetic. So this is clearly a polynomial and the reduction is relatively straightforward. You just look at the complement of the set of vertices that are in the independent set, which we didn't include here. That was part of our lemma. But there is an independent set if and only if there is a vertex cover.